Level Earth Observer is a YouTuber who used to be called Adam I. Fee. He's responsible for this amazing piece of investigatory work. Elevation is, I go up 16,322 feet. I come down 16,312 feet. Wow. Difference of 10 feet. 10 feet of difference. You heard it here first, people. There's only 10 feet of difference between Weymouth and Aberdeen. Of course, what you fail to understand is that you're using elevation, which is a value given to the height above sea level. As you're making your journey from one seaside town to another, then of course there's going to be very little difference between the two. And of course, very recently was the guy that brought the BT Tower proof to the attention of Ranty Flat Earth. Well, he is back, and this time he's really put his foot in it. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Yes, these space deniers are willing to try anything in an attempt to show that space is nothing but a story told by NASA and the world governments. And Level Earth Observer thinks he's found a video to strengthen the position of these science space deniers. Unfortunately, and as usual, with a little bit of research, he could have saved himself from what's about to follow. Let's join him as he starts his video. We're gonna have a quick look at this SpaceX Starhopper pantomime, and then we're gonna highlight the obvious problems yet again. So have a quick look at this test launch. SpaceX's Starhopper is a prototype for a Mars mission called Starship. Primarily, they've been testing a new type of engine called a Raptor. Starhopper has one of these engines, the final design will have six. So this gigantic rocket, which is a hybrid of a silo and a water tower blended with a rocket. <laughs> Such imagination, these space deniers has just blasted off. It's created a massive amount of dust, okay? But here's the problem. You've got all the oxygen and gases coming out of the rocket. Enough energy, supposedly, to get this hybrid rocket silo water tower off the ground. Thus, it's created all this dust. But once it's in the air, Strangely enough, the force or the energy of the gases coming out of the rocket have no effect on the dust cloud it's created. Okay, so Level Earth Observer thinks he's found yet more evidence to show how this space thing is a load of nonsense. I'm suspicious though. Let's carry on. Very strange. It's almost as if the rocket's not really there. Let's have a look. So the energy coming out of the back of the rocket has absolutely no effect now upon these dust clouds below it. Not one single bit of this dust cloud gets affected by the rocket or the energy coming out of the bottom of the rocket. At this point though, I wouldn't say that the Starhopper is high enough. As it launched, the dust dispersed in a circular pattern and Starhopper is still in the middle of this circle enough energy to hold this giant hybrid water tower stroke silo stroke rocket up in the air. Bearing in mind the dust particles within the air, they're going to be heavier than the air. So the energy or gases coming out of the rocket would definitely have an effect upon the dust cloud. But it doesn't, as you're about to see. I would say that there is some movement there actually. Let's look again. This looks like the Starhopper is moving out of the ring of dust through the back of it. Definitely something happening there. Doesn't affect it whatsoever. Let's just go back now and I'll keep my mouth shut for a little bit. 
Right, here we go. Just watch how the rocket and the gases coming out of the back of the rocket have absolutely no effect upon the dust cloud it's created. You can hear the amusement in his voice, can't you? Bless him. Absolutely no effect whatsoever. It's as almost as if someone's put in a CGI rocket silo water tower. So he's gone down the normal route of CGI. What a surprise. Strange that, isn't it? I mean, look at the state of the thing. And yet if you tried to build one, I'm sure it would look a lot better than that. And already it's having a massive effect upon the dust and it's quite high up in the air. But strangely enough, it had no effect upon the dust just now as it rose above the dust cloud. No effect whatsoever. It's almost as if it's been pasted in. Terrible. Well, something is terrible, but it's not SpaceX's test. It's your critique. And your argument is a poor one. The reason? Perspective. You see, I thought I'd take a little look around the internet and see if I can find anything else on YouTube about the Starhopper's launch. And I found this from Everyday Astronaut. Now he filmed the Starhopper himself from the ground at a different angle. Here, take a look. Now, let's watch as it launches. Oh, there it goes. Come on, baby. It might be rising. Come on. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh my god, it's actually flying! Now, already at this point, you can see that the wind is moving the dust to the left. No way! No way, the ground is shaking! Now, ignoring everyday astronauts' beautiful excitement, we can clearly see that the wind has now blown the dust well out the way of the Starhopper and its engines. Oh, that's gonna be humans landing on Mars someday, look at that thing! Amazing. Makes level Earth observers video look a little bit silly now, doesn't it? Honest mistake or intellectual dishonesty? What do we all think? So to clarify, this hybrid water tower, silo, stroke rocket prop created enough energy coming out the back of its rocket to lift off the ground, but that same amount of energy couldn't affect a dust cloud whatsoever. Now, if we were to look at this as an independent viewer, not choosing any side, just looking at the footage. I'd say this footage is garbage and fake. So the footage is fake, right. Well, your independent viewer thing gave me a bit of an idea. If any of you 200,000 odd subscribers witnessed this test, then please do let me know via email at simandan at gmail.com and we'll see just how fake it is. It also came to my attention that the Globebusters, a 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. The Globebusters have mirrored this video on their own channel. So that's two channels spreading blatant lies. Right, that brings this episode to a lovely close. Thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe. There's just enough time left to say happy birthday to Jay Silvestri. Many happy returns, buddy. Have a great day. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week. 
And I'll see you all on Friday where Mr. Joey is back. See you then. <laughs>